Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119, also HarbachElectronics.com. So we have a Amp Supply Company, LK500, no tune. Had this here for about a month, I was waiting on replacement capacitors. Three of the air variable caps are severely damaged. The third one is still in the amplifier. You can see the damaged plates down here. Yeah, so here are the new ones from the original manufacturer. They had to be custom made. We put the series glitch resistor in. Filter caps are okay. Uh, customer said he might have me change them depending on what the rest cost. I I said they don't really need to be changed, so it's up to him. I'll check the SO239 connectors. Most likely needs a new set of tubes. So um, if it needs tubes, I'll get them from Penta. Awesome company, awesome customer service. So I'm going to get to work, and I will see you guys soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're back with the completed... Amp Supply Company LK500 NTB. I'm going to go over everything I did to it. So, customer opted to not have the Harbach board put in. It's really not needed at the moment. And I told him that. And he's uh, local, so he can always bring it down if he has an issue. So, the SO239s were okay, so I left those alone. Bias diode okay so here are the old air variable caps these are like shot shot so a trick you know if only one edge you know some some of these are only partially messed just a tiny bit so they're like minimum capacitance they all have a padding capacitor in parallel with them these are all the same value uh, so if they're just barely meshed and there's damage you can just go to the other side just rotate it so the damage plates aren't near each other uh, you, you know go to the opposite side so basically you know like see here partially messed a little bit and you just rotate it and go to the other side that's undamaged okay so there was one that had a little teeny weeny bit of damage over here so went from being partially meshed on this side to partially meshed on that side this is a very tricky amp you know you have to be really careful so I went in here and tuned it up for max output uh, to the 1500 watt PEP level the middle of each band so you just have to be really careful. I don't recommend anyone do this. I'm not telling you to do this, but went in here with a phenolic screwdriver and tuned each one. So I'm going to put a dab of super glue on the new ones, and I readjusted that one obviously. To, I'm going to keep them, you know, to keep them in place. I don't have nail polish, and the purse can always break it free. It won't be permanent. Just a little dab. So sorry for my hands. I know people don't like my hands. Uh, it's late here, so. A lot of hardbox orders to fill. Got this all done. The capacitors actually showed up today, so I got them in. So you can see the new one. Let me find uh, something to point with. I'll just use this, I guess. So new one, new one, and where's the other one? New one, new one. So new one, new, and new. So I rewound new parasitic suppressor assemblies. These are 150 ohm each, so three in parallel. I have 50 ohms for each one in total with the three in parallel per assembly. Put nice small ring terminals, had large hole ring terminals, so those are the proper size for the screw, which I believe is the number four. A little tiny screw. Put a series glitch resistor in, it's a 10 ohm. 10 watt wire one right there. I cleaned a little dribble of solder from when I soldered these connections. I went through the whole 
folded it over and soldered. So, clean the output rotary slash band switch with deoxy gold and hit it arced. So I think this guy put it into an open, or maybe the guy he got it from, I think, put it into an open and uh, it was using it into a really bad SBR and you know, so that's why he was arcing stuff and you know, arcing the plates and I flashed the switch so I contact and everything was okay. I just spent a lot of time cleaning it with denatured alcohol so that is good. You know, uh, this is a funny, uh, you know, funny setup. Problem is, the output network is tuned to a portion of the band, preferably the center. So, as you, you know, let's say it requires X amount of power, or it's tuned, and you go above and below, it's going to require more drive, and then it's going to be thrown out of tune. So, conventionally, you know, you have the fine adjust on the load side, doesn't really give you much adjustment, but um, it's to match the the output of the amplifier and the load impedance. So the output network, which should see 50 ohms, and then the 50 ohm load. So if it's above or below 50 ohms, this helps you tune it out a little bit. So you know, conventional amp, you have the plate in load, and you can tweak it for the upper part of the band or whatever part of the band. This you cannot. So. Yeah, you know, it was a good idea, but so anyway, I had to readjust the 40 meter input circuit, mica compression trimmer caps, and I just threw a small carrier, like five watts, into it, and we carefully went in there and adjusted it, and that is good. So this thing is all set. So if you need an amplifier repaired. Feel free to give me a call. My phone number is 203-892-4119. My website is harbachelectronics.com. I have a set of test tubes here. And the customer ordered Pentalab tubes. So he's having them sent here. I'm going to plug them in for him and make sure they're good prior to him taking it back. I do only what's needed. No extra stuff. You know, less is more, and uh, you know, I do it right. You know, so it's been tested in all bands. She's good. So, again, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, tomorrow, I think I have a AL811 or AL811H that's going on the bench. Gentleman from, I think he's from Pennsylvania. He shipped it in. So I have a whole pile of boxes in the other room. I think I have like eight amps here. So I'm going through them as quick as I can. Luckily, I have all the hardbox kits here and I have lots of parts in stock. So I'm getting things done really quick. And for those ordering hardbox kits, I've been getting them out either the same day or within a business day. I was just, uh, there were a couple orders. I was waiting on a relay and I let them know. And once they came in, I Got them out, but I ordered a bunch, so hopefully that won't happen again. But I've been keeping on top of everything. Um, I just, uh, I'm obsessed with getting things out quick. You know, I repair amps for a living, and I know what it's like when you're waiting on a part. You know, so, well, people, you know, when you have something apart, and you want to get back on it and get it done, you know, I know what it feels like, so... So again, if you need anything, feel free to give me a call. I'll be doing this for a long time, 42, and I love it. And uh, once I get some more of these amps out of here, I will get back on the uh, multi-band amp. I just have to start connecting some wires for the input circuit, which is easy peasy. And I can't wait to um, do a power test on that thing. I actually talked to my electrician today. Um, figure out what size service I need here to get the proper wire in underground because the power company pays for up to a certain size a certain amount of feet and uh, save me a bunch of money so if I have to put in a I think it goes from 400 to 600 to 1200 or whatever I'll put in whatever and he gives he basically does his half for the you know cost of materials and I just need a stiff line voltage here for testing larger stuff 
So um, I was actually all for three phase, but they wouldn't do delta, so that won't work for me. I don't want to have another transformer to step 208 up to 240 because I have stuff, you know, appliances and a well pump that run on 240. So, all right, so I've been rambling on enough. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. And please leave a comment. I do my best to respond. And uh, also, if you can like, share, and subscribe, you know, I, I really appreciate that too. So, the one last thing the AK Ultra, the guy was waiting for a crating company to pack it up. So, I guess it's all crated, and he was checking to see if the shipping company picked it up from them yet. But I do have a Henry 8K Ultra that will be coming in. And as long as it's not too far gone, I plan on going through it and uh, selling it. So I'll you know fully test it, show videos of it and all that. I'm an expert with those amps. I've worked on half a dozen of them, gone through them and all that. The uh, problem is a lot of the parts need to be custom made, so it gets expensive. But um, if, I can re if I can save it, I will. And... Um, you know, I'll sell it and be another ramp saved from the, the scrapyard. I also have a, a TL922 that uh, that's available. I just have to go through it once I have a buyer. I got I just sold a another one to another guy. He's loving it. Uh, every once in a while, I'll get an amp. You know, certain amps come in and I'll go through it because I know there are a lot of operators that have problems with buying amps from people. For, you know, if everyone could be honest, that'd be awesome. But a lot of people sell things that. You know, they don't disclose issues on and it just you know so at least when the uh, amp comes from me you know it's been gone through everything's been done to it and it'll work you know so and I sell the amps with uh, well all the glass envelope tube amps come with a brand new set of pentlab tubes unless the customer just wants to put his own tubes in I'll give him a discount um, whoever's buying it so again thank you for watching and have a great night 73.